Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Lord, I just pray right now that your Holy Ghost will fall on us. The power will flow through us in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every power of the enemy be, with the, be just dismantled right now in the name of Jesus. Every religious thought, every, every thing that was spoken out there to be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray the, the, the weather, the fear of the weather, the stress of the weather to remove from the people right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, allow us just to open our hearts so we can experience your worship, so we can experience who you are in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? I learned a new word, and maybe I'm going to misuse it, but I'm going to try my best because I learned a new word. It's kind of cool, eh? Type analogy. So first, well, there are two words. But analogy, type analogy. Like the Word of God is a type of analogy, right? It, it's something that relates to us, and it relates to the place. So I was listening to someone speak, and I was hearing this story about how Moses was a type analogy of Jesus saving his people. And so what happened is that we come to a place of, he ha we have to listen to somebody, right? We have to listen to somebody. We have to grab a hold of a shepherd to be able to lead us out of destruction. And so when they're in Moses' time, in that place where they had to do it over and over again, but Moses stood fast, and he was a type analogy, I'm trying to pronounce it right, but he was a place of saying, this is what the new holds for you. I'm going to show you what the, in the Old Testament, you have to know that, Every time there was salvation was through a prophet or through a man. There was salvation through a, a man that God led to the next level. Amen? But the fact is that if, what would happen if the Israelites would have not listened to Moses? What would have happened? You would have been destructed because Jesus could only heal them in the wilderness. Jesus could only bless them in the wilderness. Jesus actually chose to take them out of their chaos and bring them into the wilderness so they could experience his presence. And sometimes we are in the chaos. We are in a place of chaos, and we're not willing to get out of the chaos of our life to be able to move out of that place and just say, here I am, God, in the wilderness. I choose to be alone with you. I choose to... They were actually not alone, okay? But they were alone with God as the Israelites. So if you think, oh, i got to be all alone. No, it's just there was millions of people of the Israelites, whatever amount of people there were, there's lots. And there were a lot of Israelites that came out and the only way God could heal them is to take them out of destruction because the destruction is what stopped the blessing of God in their life. Now, sometimes we are in the place of government or the place of whatever we are in struggles with. And if we don't remove ourselves from the past, if we don't remove ourselves from those circumstances, or if we don't hear the voice of God, or we don't listen to that leader that's trying to pull us out of the destruction so you can hear the voice of God, then you're not going to get it. In Moses' time, they had to put blood on the door. When these plagues came, because uh, when that first child, firstborn of that child would die, they had to put blood over the door, blood over their, the windows of the sacrifice they made to God. Another technology, technology, there's a place where we have to understand that when we live in a wreck, God is there to save us. Well, even in the most disastrous time, our Lord Jesus is there as long as we listen to him. He I said to put the blood around the doors, and the blood was not there for the enemy to recognize. The, I mean, the, it was not there to, it was there for the enemy to look at the blood and say, I can't go enter. It, it's to say God's protection was there. People obeyed. That blood was there saying, God says, that's my house, that's my people. And with everyone that had it, it was protected in that place. But I want to talk a little bit about today about hearing the voice of a leader or voice of wisdom or the voice of God and, and to be a good cheer. But at the same time, to be a good cheer, we've got to listen so we can be in good cheer. But there is times in our life that we made mistakes. How many of you made mistakes here in life? Anybody? Okay. So we all made mistakes in life and we kind of did the wrong thing. Would you not agree? We kind of just should have not done it. We, we kind of knew better. We heard that we shouldn't do that, but we did it anyway. Even though it was good, even it was not a bad thing, but we knew that was not for us, and we still did it. Anybody ever been there? Even if it was not evil. It was like, oh, this sounds good. I'm going to give it a try. Right? And, the, and there's a warning saying, no, don't do it right now. You ever had a warning saying, no, I would, say, I would advise you to stay away from that right now. I would advise you to go this way, and I wouldn't advise you to enter into that place right now. You ever been advised and did it anyway because you thought the man didn't know what he was saying? You ever advised because you thought maybe that wasn't God talking after all? Maybe it was just my own thinking? You ever been there? Yeah, we've all been there, right? So I'm, everybody's kind of looking down already. I'm not, I'm not trying to find guilt here. I'm just trying to find answers here. 
And so I think we often go into that place of saying, well, I'm not sure if that was God. Maybe it was just me. So I'm going to go do it anyway because it's a good thing. And oh boy, don't we ever get into destruction when we do a good thing when it's not meant for us. We enter into a storm because that's why the warning was there in the first place because God knew there was some havoc on your way if you went that way. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about Paul in Acts chapter 27. We're going to focus on Acts 27. And um, we're going to focus on this, this man, this uh, first one, one to eight. He was, uh, he was actually with, one, with the prisoners, entered into the ship, and they were taking him to this other place, and they were, they were, he was forced onto the ship to go, and he had to go with the ship. And verse 9, he says this, And now when much time had been spent on the voyage, which was the, the sailing ship, having already come, become dangerous because the fast was already gone by, Paul recommended. So the, basically, they were in the face of fast. They hadn't had food for a while. They, they, they were being ready for something. Then verse 10 says, saying to them, Men, I perceive this voyage is going to be with hardship and much lost, not only for the cargo, but also, but, uh, sorry, not just only of the cargo of the ship, but also of our lives. He's saying here, I would advise you and telling you that I feel that this thing is in great danger, this ship. I'm advising you that the thing you're entering in, there might be great danger in the process that you're trying to enter into. I'm advising you to not drag all those people with you and think that's the right thing to do. It could destroy something here because I'm advising you right now. I'm telling you right now that that's not the right choice that you're making to enter into your business, to enter into the new job, to enter into this. Whatever advice you get from God or from the person or the prophet that you're asking to get an answer from, and you also you just remove that saying, well, it's just a man anyway. So maybe, maybe he wasn't right to begin with, so, but that's a good opportunity and I'm not going to lose out on it. And so they were saying, I'm advising you that this ship and this cargo and even our lives could be in danger. Verse 11 says, but the centurion was persuaded by the hemsmen, which is the, and the ship owner, rather than the things what Paul said. So who are you, sir? I would rather go with this guy because he's been a boater for a long time and he knows his ship quite well. He knows his business quite well. It sounds good and he sounds like he knows what he's doing. It sounds like he's going to make a lot of money. Whatever, you can put your own words in there. We're just using it as a type analogy, right? And so we're looking at this place of saying, <clears throat> it looks good. It could be possible. See, the thing is, I have, I've been approached lots of times for businesses. People come with me with a business plan. Because I'm a people person, because I'm a pastor, they think I can do all things, and they think that I can just be a businessman and make a lot of sales for people. So they come with this opportunity, which is an opportunity. I choose to take it or I don't take it, and maybe for some people it's great, but the fact is that I can't just trust on what that person brings me in the ship. I got to trust the people around me that have been called to be my shepherds, have called to be my leader, even the voice of God. I have to learn to hear that and I have to learn to be advised by that. And so I have to learn how to grab a hold of that. Sometimes we don't go there. Sometimes we go to the stranger and, and, and you know what? Have you ever tried running away from a prophecy because you didn't want to do the prophecy because you thought what you thought was of God and what they said was not of God? Have you ever tried running away from it? Well, I have. I'm just going to tell you some stories. It didn't pass. I have tried many years ago. I tried. I tried running away. So I ran away and I said, okay, I'm going to go to that guy. I heard he's prophetic too. So this is what he said. And I went three, four places, and they all said the same thing with different words. <laughs> so I had four rivers come into me in the same area. So I had a pressure going on saying, okay, God. So we run, and we run, and then we try to argue the point with each leader and each person that we try to get advice from. He said, well, don't you think this? Don't you think this? Well, how do you think that? Why do you think that? I don't think anything. I'm just telling you what I think God thinks. You know, we've got to get into that place of saying, I'm not thinking no more. I'm just telling you what God thinks in my, from this vessel. And so I went to four different places. I'm telling you, every one of them slapped me. And, and every one of them said, you're wrong. And so we go in that place. Now, there's another circumstance in my life where I felt another thing to do. So I went to one person, and I didn't get the answer that I felt was of God. And... Um, well, it was a mixed answer either way. It was not understood. And then I went to three other places, and they all said what God told me. And so then I go according to the witness of God in my heart. 
And so, but I don't push it. They just came to me. I sat in the front row, like, like these guys are here, in a, in a worship service. All of a sudden, this guy just comes straight to me and says that you're going to relocate. We were thinking about moving to Manitoba at that time. You're going to relocate and bring a new location. And he spoke right to my... <laughs> Yep. And then there was another one that did the same thing. He says, you, you ha there's a plan for you, and there's going to be in a very, very quick time that you need to move. There's, it just happens like that. And so if I, what, what would have happened if I would have not listened to the people and listened to the advice that I was seeking from God? I would have had a shipwreck. And I still sometimes feel like I have a shipwreck. At least I'm in a storm. At least I have a McTanium ship or something. It's not breaking yet, but... Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong ship at this point. And so we go and look at this, how Paul did. And he's, this guy says, I, they rather believe the owner of the ship than what Paul said. And if you read from there on to 21, it talks about how Paul warned and how Paul had this visit, had this understanding and um, just warning them that you should just, let's just stop here for the winter. Let's, let's do it. But they didn't want to stop there because it was a small town. There's nothing going on here. And I'm paraphrasing maybe big time, but it's just like there's small towns. Uh, it's uh, not much going on here. We want to go where the action is. This is just a small town, a small church. I don't want to be here right now. I want to go where the action is. Uh, I, I, this is just a small business. I want to go where the millions are. I don't want to go where the hundred thousands are. Uh, I, it's just that idea of not being happy where you could be and where you could be blessed without being damaged. And so we go into this place of this voyage and we go to this life of ship. Our, our life is full of, is a ship. It's a, it's a place where our, our vocation is. But one thing cool about a ship, it, a vessel in the water is a cool thing is because it's run by the Holy Spirit. It's run by the currents of the water. And so either you choose to run by it or you don't. And if you don't run by what you're led to do, it can destroy you in a very short time. Because in every power of every ship, there is a ruach. There is a bad wind that comes against you. And it could become a place of destruction if you don't know how to sail your ship or you don't know how to sail your purpose. Let's look at your ship as your purpose, as your lot in life, okay? If you don't know how to sail it, and if you don't know where you're going with it, and if you don't have a person that helps you run your ship, you're going to have a disaster. And, well, according to the scriptures here, on this ship was 273 people, something like that. Full of people ready to go across to a different place. And, and then they were actually transporting prisoners. And sometimes we have to understand with our ship, we have a lot of things that are against us. As we are in our ship, they were transporting, they were trying to get rid of or remove the very essence of the things that were against them, basically the murders and everything else in life. And so when we look at the ship, we all have demons sometimes. We have things that are in our lower level sometimes. We need to transport and we need to remove. I'm not saying these people were demons. I'm just using an analogy here that we go forth and that we have this attack that comes against us or what is going to come against us in the future. We have to re really get ready for floating this ship and this purpose and this destiny. The biggest thing, this came out because the Pastor Kelly spoke a little bit about it and then we touched a little bit on our spiritual DNA course, was how often don't you, people, I'm just going to use it as myself because I don't know any other example right now, but, um, or even to Pastor Kelly, we have people come and ask for wisdom and direction or prayer. How many of you know that's part of life of a pastor? And we come directly under there and we tell them and simply saying that this is what we feel the Lord is showing us and this is the wisdom we're showing that you need to slow down here or do this or that, whatever it may be, we might say. And often we see people say, yes, okay, I got it. And then a week or two later, they're doing the very opposite. And they have headaches, they have all kinds of stuff going on in their life and uh, this disaster is coming. I'm not saying I'm God, but I know a I know my friend. He, <laughs> I know my Jesus quite well. And when he talks and on the behalf of a leader, as I'm called to be, uh, people say, well, I can't do that. Well, the thing is that you're going to have shipwrecks after shipwrecks after shipwrecks in your life if you don't choose to move this way. The thing is, you are breaking your purpose into pieces every time you don't listen. And I'm going to talk about that a little because this was a disaster they had because they didn't listen to Paul. A disaster, a disaster. Verse 21 of Acts 27. Verse 21. Are you with me? You're so quiet. 
the storm is louder out there than here. Well, there's no storm, so maybe we need to be a storm in here. Let's break some wind. I mean, oh, that's kind of... <laughs> Uh, no stormy wind I'm talking about. That could go the same way. Oh, we'll just leave that. Acts. <laughs> At least they got some people awake. Acts 21, Acts 27, verse 21. Acts 27, verse 21. And then they had been a long time without food. Paul stood up in the middle of them and said, Sirs, you should listen to me and not have set sail from Crete and have gotten this injury and loss. So these guys were in the water already. They were, they were floating in the ship here. And they were saying, you should have listened to me. Because you should have stopped where I wanted you to stop. And you should have just hold on instead of pushing ahead of the storm. Or pushing yourself into a place that you could ignore. Don't push yourself. Don't walk into places that you can't uh, avoid. Where if you can't if you can avoid them, then don't go there. Because if you're in life, if you have stresses, don't go where you know there's going to be temptation. Don't walk into the place that's going to ruin your, flo your ship, their, your purpose. Don't walk into those places. He's saying, if you would have listened to me, you would have been safe. You would have been safe in who you are. You would have been safe in everything. And I think we have to come into that place of saying, sometimes we walk into places because we think we have God's grace. We walk into circumstances because we say, oh yeah, I can handle this. And we walk in there ahead of God, and we walk into a storm that we're not designed to walk into. Our ship is not built for it. He said, this boat was not even built for this. This ship was not built for this strong weather. This, this, this ship was not built for that. And sometimes we, our purpose is not built to walk into that storm that we can ignore. We have to walk into the place of saying, I'm going to choose not to walk in where my temptations are. I choose not to walk in where there's destruction. I choose not to walk in that place. But Paul says here, you should have listened to me. You should have, done because you would have, uh, you have gotten this injury and loss because you didn't listen to me. And I can talk, I have m many, many, many people in my life that I minister to. There's people that have listened and been successful. There's people that have not listened. Not to me, necessarily, just as a vessel, as a voice of God. And they... Just so you know, when I say listen to me or listen to the voice that I, the vessels in me, it's always been a confirmation of something that was in them, okay? It was not just me. It was saying, yeah, I get it, okay? It was not to the point where there was a total disagreement. It was a, to a point that people, aren't, what I'm talking about is the ones that got it, okay? And so he says, listen to me. And if, I if those people that didn't listen and chose not to take the progress that we asked to them to take, the process that we wanted them to take, they chose not to do it. And they said that God can heal me the one time instead of going through all this. But you know what? This ship had many ports that had stopped. If you read through this chapter, they had to stop at many ports. In your life, you have to stop at many ports to get to your destination. If you don't stop at those ports, you are going to lose your ship. You gotta refuel. You gotta get, you gotta get your hunger back in there. You got, you gotta be fed because even one place before 21, it talks about where where they stopped at a place and uh, they allow Paul to go to their friends and family so they could be taken care of him so that he could handle the voyage. And so we have to stop at places. We have to stop at purposes. We have to. I have to stop here, Pastor Kelly. I gotta stop here. I gotta get the feeling that I need. I gotta stop here and I gotta get the encouragement that I need. I gotta stop here and I gotta get the orders that I need, whatever you wanna call it. I gotta, I gotta stop here, I gotta stop there, I, I have to stop. And so we do, sometimes don't wanna stop, we just wanna go. Just go. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> we're gonna go what it takes and we're gonna go. And so, so he said, Paul says, if you would have had not set sail from Crete, the word Crete is this it's the largest and most fertile island. If you would have just stayed at the place of fertile, if you would have stayed at the place of prosperity, if you would have stayed there, you would have been well off because there was enough there for you. If you would have just not moved ahead and just say, thank you, God, I'm here and safe and sound. Verse 22, and now I exhort you to cheer up or be of good cheer. I exhort you to cheer up for there, is, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. See, this is pretty cool. He says, no, I want you to cheer up because no matter what's going on here, this storm is bad. This waves are smashing this, this boat, this ship, and it's just going crazy. And, and it's violent. People are so scared. They're thinking about, about killing, throwing the people off. They're thinking about all kinds of stuff by this point already. And he says, cheer up. Now, in your storm, even though you made the wrong decision in your life, 
Even if you walked on the wrong purpose of your life, God says, cheer up. God says, I exhort you, get happy, happy, come on, change your attitude in your storm. He says, the fact is, you're not going to lose your life. The fact is, cheer up, you're going to be alive and well. Just cheer up, you're going to get through this. Cheer up, sir, everybody that's watching, cheer up knowing that God is setting you free. Cheer up knowing that you don't have to live in your wreck too much longer. Cheer up that you know that that ship that is falling apart on you is not going to be yours much longer. <laughs> cheer up. I'm going to give you to safety. I'm going to bring you to safety. Cheer up. Be of good cheer. I love this. To now exhort you to cheer up. And this word cheer up in Greek means this. I like this. To put it in a good spirit. It's a choice. When Paul says, I exhort you, I encourage you to cheer up. It's a choice you got to make. You got to choose to be happy. You got to choose to get strong again in your circumstances. You got to choose to get strong in your voyage, in, in, the, in the place of destruction. You have to choose. And it also means to glad, but I love this word. It's, it's also to make cheerful. How many of you often hear me say, if you don't want to smile, then just do it anyway? Right? You mean you make your smile. You make your cheerful. You make it. That's what the word means there. Get, cheer up, cheer up. Come on. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> get that smile on. Cheer up. You're not in a bad state after all. You are free indeed. And your freedom is coming your way even in spite of the things we've done wrong in life. I mean, often we do things wrong and we find ourselves just give up and we just go down with the ship. God says you don't have to go down with it. You don't have to go down with your struggles. You don't have to go down with your depression. You don't have to go down with anything that you're dealing with. You don't have to go down with it. He said, and the word means be, be in good courage. Be cheerful. I think what we need to do is we need to make ourselves cheerful in a place of loss. Like we lose on our battles. We lose on this. We lose on that. We got to cheer up in those places where we feel that we have lost. If you don't cheer up, you're going to stay in your lost. You got to be encouraged to cheer up and be a good cheer because if you're not in a good cheer, if you choose not to do that, you're going to stay in the lost. You don't want to be there. You want to move forward from there. Amen? Verse 23 says, For they stood by me this night. Uh, he said, he was explaining himself after he says, Cheer up uh, that you won't lose. He says, Therefore, for there w stood by me. Uh, me this night an angel which is a messenger belonging to God whose I am <laughs> I like that whose I am he's a, here's an angel that was sent to me that belongs to God of whose I am I am part of the I am I am my God my Jesus uh, Jesus is the I am how many know that and he's the I am that he says I am my God I am part of that I am I am that part of that I am. I am part of that body of Christ. I'm part of that church. I'm part of Jesus Christ. That angel is part of who, who we are because of God. He says, belonging to the, to the God of those uh, whose I am, sorry, and whom I serve, which means who I worship. And there's a whole other level of worship there. I would love to go into a place of worship someday soon. I'm going to preach on it. There's a deep level of worship that God wants us to go to. He wants us to where the Bible says that angels worship day and night, where, where people, we are not nearly to that point where we are in a place of worship, where we transform ourselves in a place of worship. We're not nearly there as human nature yet. Though we have the ability, not just to feel good when we have worship, but we have the ability to connect to the heavens when we worship. And he says, this is that God that I serve and that I, the God that I worship that I'm talking about. Verse 24 is saying, don't be afraid. This angel was saying, don't be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. Behold, God has granted you all these who sail with you. He says, be, I'm going to, you have to go where you're going. You have a destination. You, you have a purpose. You're not going to die because you have a purpose. You have, if you have a purpose, you're going to stay alive, okay? No matter what comes against you, no matter what breaks you down, you're going to stay alive. Paul had a purpose, and there was nothing that could stop him. And God, the angel said, you have a purpose. Be of good cheer. Be, know that you will not be stopped for nothing because you will make it. Yes, you're going to lose the ship. Yes, you're going to lose your energy. Yes, you're going to lose a lot of things, but you are going to stay alive for what God has created you to be. So God has created you to be alive. God has created you to be full of energy and full of joy, full of excitement to do what you're calling to do. And so he says, you got to come to Caesar. That I, we can, and he's granted you all these people that you sail with, 270 people. I granted you people 
to, to, to help you get to your destination. <laughs> Paul had a purpose, but he, didn't, he couldn't fear it. Then verse 25 says, Therefore, sirs, cheer up. Paul says, this is what the angel said, so therefore, people, cheer up. <laughs> and people hear this, this ship is going and breaking back and forth, and everything is cracking, and everything is snapping, boards are breaking. And you're hearing all this noise of screeching, and you know that your purpose is just dying away, and you know that everything you ever worked for is just breaking apart. You know, it's a most impossible time to be happy. Wouldn't you agree? And I have to make a choice to cheer up in my storm. I have to choose to be happy, and I have to choose so that I don't gain the loss, so, but I gain the prosperity of that loss. I have to choose to walk beyond this place. But the fact is, if I would have listened the first time, I wouldn't have gone through this. Right? So be careful what you listen to. Be careful where you go when you shouldn't go. But if you go because you think you should go and you made a mistake, God is still there and He won't let you lose your life. He's going to allow you to get out of it. Amen? So Paul didn't have a choice. Sometimes you don't have a choice where you're going. Sometimes it's just the things around you, you're caught in the middle of it. And you, it takes you down with you. You don't know it until it happens, right? And so sometimes you don't have a choice. Verse 25, he says, Therefore, sirs, cheer up, for I... For I believe God. He says, For I commit and I trust in what my God said to me. I have confidence that he will do what he said he would do. I have full confidence. That's what believe means. I have committed. I trusted. I have confidence. I'm, here I am, God. I choose to believe God that it will be just as he has spoken to me. Everybody say, just as. You know, the thing is that if he has said to me, Let go, let God, it should be this, so it is. If he says that this is Jody, so it is. If she says this is Brenda, so it is. You have to choose to grab a hold of what he said. He's called you for a purpose. He's called your name. And no matter what, that's what you have to believe in. That you are that person who you're designed to be. You have to choose to grab a hold of that part and believe and trust and have confidence in Jesus Christ through yourself so that you can do all things in him. You are that person. You are that called person. You are that purpose, person with purpose. You are that person. Every one of you. There's no person in this human nature that's been left out without a purpose. Get alive. Get happy. Be cheer up. Amen? He's, again, he says, cheer up. Make yourself happy. Get out of your slump. Uh, how do you say that? Slump. So didn't want to say the wrong word there. <laughs> Get out of that slump. Why? Come on, rise out of it. He says, I don't care if you're sad. Cheer up. I don't care if you're sad. Get happy. Right? Yeah. See, what we do is we need these kind of people around us. We need people like Paul who says, get out of it. Rise up. Yeah. Sirs. <laughs> and he says, but be of good cheer because I believe my God. How many have you ever heard when people are in battle, I'm the first person that says, be happy in your battle. I'm the first person that says that. I always say, be happy, happy in your fights. Because I can understand this. I understand what Paul was going through here. And he says, I believe my God. There's no reason for me to be, not be happy because I know that this is only here for a moment. And I know I'm going to get through it because my victory is within my fight. It's not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not fighting for victory. I already have it. I'm fighting with victory. Just victory all around me at all times. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm free in my battles. The battles are there, but I'm free in it. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Fight me. I'm free. I'm free in my battles. Victory, victory is here because Jesus already did the victory. So I just have to win it with the victory. If I would just stop trying to use it without victory, I would, I would be way better off. Just fight your battles with victory instead of fighting for victory. Amen? Yeah. And we've got to walk in that place. And he says, <laughs> after all that, Believe God, you're going to be okay. Be a good cheer. After all that, verse 26. However. Oh, man, that's a hard word when you hear, oh, however. It's not a but. If it was a but, you didn't have to go through the ladder. But it's a whatever. However. You know, a but zeroes everything out before if you take the but. But now, it's a however. It means I still have to put up with that and now this. However, we must be cast onto a certain island. 
<laughs> Basically, I'm going to put you on an island. You didn't listen to me, but at least you're going to be safe, but we're going to put you on a strange island. And the word cast means I'll place you on where you can't keep yourself. As you don't keep a position on the ship anymore. You have to be brought out of it. You're going to lose your position. You're going to lose that place that you had, and I'm going to cast you onto an island. So these people were walking in that place of being totally in, in the middle of the ship. They, Paul was saying that you're going to be cast on an island. They're still fighting for their ship. They didn't believe Paul yet, not necessarily all the way. And they're still fighting for, for everything they had. Verse 27. But then... The 14th night came. Just think about being in a storm like this for 14 nights. You know what? Today's society, we can pop a cup of pills and have a break from our storm. You know? <laughs> we can. I mean, we have that technology. We have the technology to numb ourselves in our storm. Um, I don't know if they had it back then. But thank, just, you can be thankful for that because you don't have to go for 14 days straight with a mental storm. Right? We can thank God for what we have. But these people had this for 14 nights straight. I was not trying to condemn them. I just, by the way, I believe that some people absolutely should have medication. But the fact is what I'm saying is that we have this ability to win. We have this ability to go over it. But 14, they had their 14th night came, and it was driven back and forth in the sea. I, I mean, I've been on a, on a cruise ship for a couple of days. And there was one night where I thought that they were all calm because they... One thing cool is nobody knew who was drunk. Absolutely nobody. I mean, you could have been drinking all day. You could have not been drinking all day. You all looked the same. You're all going... <laughs> and your mind was doing the exact same thing as with alcohol in it because you were going crazy with seasickness. And, and you're just going up and down and this, all of a sudden a ship. You actually literally felt it. All of a sudden you just walk in there. All of a sudden, poof! <laughs> the best thing I could do, go, go into my room that was right by the water <laughs> and close my eyes <laughs> because I didn't want to be part of it no more. And that's how we get rid of storms. We close our eyes. <laughs> but it doesn't work, just so you know. And so we go, this thing was going back and forth and back and forth. And these guys were driven back and forth for 14 days. That was for one night for us. That was enough. Uh, we, everybody was popping gravel and try <laughs> <laughs> trying to calm their stomachs down. You know? The gravel didn't help much because you weren't hungry after that and you f were tired after that and you basically lost a whole night of fun on a ship. Uh, but either way, this is the same thing that happened here. It's the 14 nights that went back and forth. Just think about a ship being wrenched for 14 nights. And this thing was going there. And sometimes we have that in our purpose. We, are, we have this thing that keeps on going and just wrenching who we are, just wrenching our purpose. It's wrenching the very thing we float on. It's wrenching the very thing we survive on. It's wrenching on the very thing we believe in. It's wrenching on everything that we ever, ever had in our hands. It's just wrenching. All of a sudden, everything just seems like it's falling apart in front of our eyes. And why, God? Why? And we, we know the why, but we don't understand the why in the storm. We don't. Because we don't think about the whys in the storm. We think about how bad our God is. Why would God allow this in, a, in those times? And so here goes, driven back and forth in the sea about midnight. The sailors summarized that they were drowning near to some land. So here they summarized and they figured it out and said, Well, guess what? We're drowning. This is going to go down. We have no way of saving this. It's going down. Verse 28. Sorry. They looked uh, in the surrounding and found 20 uh, fathoms. Fathoms? I, f I, I was looking at this word, King James, fathoms. It's actually a place to measure. It's from your tip of your finger to your tip of your finger. That's how you measure. It says about 20 of those away, away from the island, basically. It's about six feet. But five to six feet, depending on how big you are. But, <laughs> and so here they go and they, they measured and look. Wow, we're about 20 fathoms away. That sounds really cool, doesn't it? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it sounds cool the way I'm saying it. Uh, after a little while, <laughs> they took, took the sounding again and found 15. After a while, they went again. Oh, now 50. How many times have you been in a storm where you say, oh boy, I can't see the end. I think it's there. Oh, it's, it's, it's getting closer. And then you keep looking. <sighs> Almost there. It's getting closer. And so the thing is, when you're in a wreck, you need to look for some kind of hope. When you are in your destruction, when you are in your disaster zone, you need to start looking out for direction and some hope. And when you can proclaim some hope, and then you can proclaim it a little later, 
saying I'm that much closer to my hope, you're going to have some gladness going on in there. And so these guys had that measurement going on, and they were walking there. <laughs> I like that word, but the fact is that you just imagine how, how these old guys, sailors, would have measured. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's about 20 fathoms, and it's about 15 fathoms. I don't know, so, you know? So this, they didn't have a measuring tape or, or some sort of thing that they needed to measure distance, but they had that. But I like that idea. I like the whole idea of looking at the distance of freedom. Look at your process that you're going through, through those storms, and look at the process and say, if I go there and I do this and I do this, I'm getting closer. 20 fathoms, and now I take the next step. 15 fathoms, next step. 10. I get closer when I take the process of believing for the freedom. Amen? Verse 29. Fearing that we would run around on rocky ground, they let go of four anchors from the stern, and they wished for daylight. So they let go of the, the anchors, and they, they wished. This word wish means they prayed for daylight. How many of you know that in your storm, in your darkness, you just want a glimpse of light, a glimpse of hope? They are tired. 14 days of just gloom and doom. No sunshine, no stars, no nothing in their life. Just for 14 days of darkness and storm and wind and blowing and wrenching and breaking and falling and water coming into your boat. And 14 days, they just needed a glimpse of hope. They just, if we could just get some daylight. And I believe there's people today... They're saying that if I could just get a glimpse of a light, if I could get a glimpse of hope, if there was just somebody that could help me, if there's just somebody that could understand me, if there's just somebody that could help me out of this place, and then before I die in this drowned. And that's what he says, there's a glimpse of hope. Uh, if we could just wish, we pray for daylight. As the soldiers were trying to flee out of the ship, they lowered the boat into the sea, pretending that they would lay out the anchors from the boat. And as, we as the story goes on, they were pretending, and the thing is, if they would have let those things down, they actually landed up cutting them off. They actually let them drop because those things would have torqued it yet more. That they, they had to pretend to, to do it for the sake of the mindset of the people. They had to pretend to lower these things so that they could feel that they're being secured. But the fact is, Paul came later on in the scripture. You can read the whole chapter. He came in later on and said, if you do that, this boat's going to go down. You got to stay on the boat. And they were trying to put a tugboat on there. They were trying to do all kinds of things to save these people. He says, but if you're going to do that, it's just going to go down. So they, they waited out. But when it comes to the part of this, they go out and that boat started sinking. And he said they, they wanted to actually throw off and drown the people, the prisoners. They wanted to drown them. They said, I'm just going to get rid of these people that don't matter. And we're going to get them. But they didn't do it because of Paul, because of Paul's word, because he was accurate, because he was right. And when he went there and he, Paul realized that, that they had to, so they said they just threw everybody over, or not threw everybody, everybody went over that could swim. Everybody else grabbed parts of the boat and they were floating on the wood. Sometimes there's in life where we're going to just have to float on that purpose. We're going to float on a piece of something that we had. We barely can hang on no more. We barely don't have enough money. We barely don't have enough of, of what it takes to survive no more. We barely are, I don't have it. We just, we just have one plank of it. We just have one plank of my big ship that we had, one plank of our prosperity that we had. We have one plank of that blessing we had, but we have one plank to sit on in the storm, and it brought us to a place. The fact is, these guys were foolish because they were trying to ram into their destination. And when they ram into the destination, they hit rocks before they should have. And the fact is that the ship broke when it didn't need to break. Sometimes we are too fast and we see some glimpse of hope, so we want that right away. Instead of finding a way to get there in a decent manner, we try to ram ourselves into somebody else. We try to ram into our healing. We try to ram into financial freedom. So we take the wrong wrong road or we, we drive too fast or we do whatever and all of a sudden these rocks are just breaking things apart and we start sinking. If they would have just hold off, they would have moved back a little bit, they would have probably survived some, somewhat more than they did. And so the fact is that we're sitting on these planks and then they were cast on this island and there you go read verse chapter 28 and I mean they didn't have a good time there either. So what I'm saying today is this. It's that God has put people in your life. God has put leaders in your life. God has, you have a voice from God himself. You hear the voice of Jesus. Listen to those voices. Check up with those voices. Listen to them so that you don't have to walk into the storm that you're not designed to have. 
Choose to walk with your purpose and, and, and excellence. Choose to walk into it and say, God, if I have to leave that alone, I'm choosing to leave that alone. I'm not going there where I'm going to be broken down. Because the fact is, all these people, they have to rebuild the whole ship now. They have to get a whole new purpose in their life. Not a whole new purpose, but they have to rebuild their purpose. They have to rebuild their, everything they did. They have, to, they have to wait for another purpose to come by, another ship to come by. They have to wait for somebody to heal them. They have to wait for somebody to take them off of the place of isolation that they've been in. There's people today that are isolated because they were wrecked. And they land up on a land somewhere where nobody can grab a hold of them hardly. They're such in a la-la land, if you want to call it that, or in a place of just destruction, or in a place of, of not, can't, can't even grab a hold of God's blessing no more because they're in that place of isolation, that island, and they're sitting there all alone with, these, with some other people maybe, but they're still being alone in it. So God is calling out for you. He's saying there's a ship coming. If you are in that island, there's a ship coming. Take hold of that ship that is coming, and they're going to set you free. They're going to set you free. You're going to come out of that place of isolation, and you're going to start rebuilding that purpose you had. You're going to start rebuilding the destiny you have. You're going to start rebuilding that place you have. So now all the past is going to go behind you, and you're going to move forward in a new ship. And there's going to be direction for you. And if you listen to the direction, your ship won't go down. You won't be. You might go in some winds, but God will show you which winds you can take, which winds you can't take. He's going to show you which battles to enter, which battles not to enter. So listen to the voice, listen to your leaders, whatever, in this case I'm saying leaders, is because Paul was voicing it out as a man of God. And so he listened to somebody that has a voice, listen to that wisdom that's coming around you so that you can actually go walking forth in purpose and destiny. Amen? I want to be able to walk in that destiny and I want to hear God's voice so that I don't have a shipwreck. There are some, some you know, some wins you can handle. There's some ones you can just be tossed around and you can handle. And there's other ones you just can't handle. You can handle them on the dock, but you can't handle them out in the sea. You can handle them in the place of church. Let's say if you are going through a storm today, and you just don't know how to get out of your storm today, but you can dock yourself. If you dock yourself, the ship will not go down. When you dock yourself, every church in, in, in southern Manitoba in the country is a dock for you. Where you belong is a dock. When you go to a different place, find a docking place so you can find a secure place for yourself. And when you find that secure place, it will help you while the storm rolls over. And then when the storm is over, then you'll become strong again and you can become forth again. There'll be times where you just have to sit and be healed. And then there's times you have to be out there floating your ship. Then you have to go sit and heal because there's a storm and you've got to get out there and float your ship. Amen? I want to walk in that place with us today and say, let's get out of that storm. And if you're the one that's been in the storm and your ship is broken down, well, allow us to help you out of that. Allow us to pick you up off of your stranded island that you're on and allow us to see God at it. One thing cool about God no matter what you did wrong, how you disobeyed God, no matter what went wrong, He's still for you, not against you. Still, he's going to save your life every time. He's going to save you every time. Amen?